Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. This week, we're going to look at the total synthesis of Leonucatal by Daniel Furkert and Margaret Brimble. Leonucatal belongs to the labdane family of terpenoids and features a tetracyclic framework with high stereochemical complexity. The unique architecture of this compound is driven by its unusual biosynthesis, which features oxidative carbon-carbon bond cleavage in addition to the more usual ring formation and oxidation biotransformations. It was first isolated in 2015 by Peng and co-workers from the Chinese liverwort plant. Preliminary biological studies indicate that it is a potent vasorelaxant with an EC50 of 2.3 micromolars in potassium chloride-induced contraction of rat aorta. Previous syntheses of Leonucatal have been attempted, but until now, a complete total synthesis has not been possible. This video will describe just how this difficult synthesis was accomplished. So let's look at the retrosynthesis. The authors envision that the last steps of the synthesis would be attaching the pendant groups to the labdane ring. Disconnecting back leads to a late stage spiroketalization, and this will be derived from a gold mediated cyclization of an alkyne bearing precursor. This alkyne precursor will be generated from the fragmentation of a bicyclic intermediate, which ultimately will be derived from a geraniol derivative bearing a nitrile group. So let's look at the first reaction using this geraniol starting material. This was a radical cyclization using titanosine dichloride as a catalyst. Reaction of zinc dust with this metallocene reduces it to titanium-3, which can act as a radical initiator. This titanium radical reacts with the epoxide group and opens the ring, leaving the radical on the most substituted carbon center. Sequential radical additions from first the alkene and then the nitrile group form the bicyclic framework, which is further reduced by the titanium radical, which, upon hydrolysis of the imine, generates the target bicyclic molecule with a ketone group in place. This reaction produces only a single isomer, and this can be attributed to the chair-like transition state. Studies into the mechanism of this reaction have shown that it does not occur through a concerted mechanism, but instead each radical addition happens sequentially. While the two rings were formed with the correct stereochemistry, the hydroxyl group produced by the ring opening of the epoxide was in the wrong configuration. In order to correct this, the authors had to carry out an epimerization sequence. First, they protected the ketone as an acetal to ensure the next reaction would be regioselective. The alcohol was then oxidized to a ketone using desmartin or iodinane. The alcohol acts as a nucleophile towards the hypervalent iodine center, and then deprotonation of the geminal hydrogen yields the target ketone. The ketone was then reduced back to an alcohol. However, this time, the product formed with the alcohol in the axial position, unlike the previous equatorial position. The acetal was deprotected using aqueous acid to restore the original ketone now that the stereochemistry of the alcohol had been inverted. A Shapiro fragmentation then followed. This used the typical conditions of a Shapiro reaction. However, due to the ether beta to the ketone group, a fragmentation was possible. Tosyl hydrazine reacted with the ketone to form a hydrazone, which was then deprotonated using methyl lithium. The proton in the alpha position was also deprotonated and this triggered the elimination of the tosyl group, leaving a diazonium moiety on the substrate. Elimination of nitrogen gas drives the reaction forward. This leaves an unstable vinyl lithium species, which would typically act as an electrophile. However, in this molecule, it undergoes a fragmentation to generate the desired alkyne alcohol product. The stereochemical outcome of this reaction was guaranteed due to the configuration of the precursor pyranone ring. This bond cleavage strategy 
was likely inspired by the carbon-carbon bond cleavage which occurs during the biosynthesis of this molecule. With the alkyne now formed, it was a trivial matter to perform a hydroxymethylation sequence. First, the primary alcohol was protected as a TIPS group. The TIPS group is sterically demanding and selectively protected the primary alcohol without reacting with the more sterically hindered secondary alcohol present on the molecule. With this protecting group in place, the alkyne was then deprotonated using methyl lithium to form an acetylide nucleophile. This reacted with formaldehyde, which upon workup produced the desired alcohol. Reaction of this primary alcohol with methyl chloride converts it into a good leaving group, which was then reacted with sodium iodide to produce a more reactive alkyne iodide species. This was then reacted with the enolate of a TBS protected beta keto ester. This was not a stereoselective reaction, however it does not matter, as the stereochemistry of a newly formed tertiary carbon center would be lost upon further reaction. This next reaction came in the form of a lactone cyclization. Selective deprotection of the TBS group using tosilic acid generated a primary alcohol. This then underwent an intramolecular transesterification reaction with the ethyl ester. This is a 5 exotrig reaction, which is highly favoured by Baldwin's rules, and produced a 5 membered keto lactone. However, the enol tautomer was preferred to the ketone group, likely due to the delocalization of the electrons in the alkene with the ester group. The next stage of the synthesis was a gold catalyzed spiroketalization, which would form the new ketyl group. I've shown a proposed mechanism here, however, this is not proven, and there are other pathways by which this reaction could occur. The most likely first step is the activation of the alkyne by the gold catalyst. This would increase the electrophilicity where the secondary alcohol could act as a nucleophile and attack the activated center, forming the first ring. Protonation of this species and the formation of an endocyclic oxonium intermediate could then act as an electrophile for another intramolecular nucleophilic addition of a hydroxyl group, this time the enol present in the lactone ring. Both of these cyclizations are favoured by Baldwin's rules. The first being a 6 endo dig cyclization, and the second a 6 exo trig. Regardless of the actual mechanism that this reaction followed, the desired product was formed in a 9 to 1 ratio with its unwanted diastereomer. With the tetracyclic framework now complete, the authors turned their attention to installing the correct functionality around the rings. This proceeded with the hydrogenation of the double bond present in the lactone ring. This occurred from only one face of the molecule. Due to the haptophilic oxygen present in the ring structure, which guided the metal catalyst to the bottom face of the molecule. However, the authors did observe a pimerization during this reaction, which came from the cleavage and reforming of the spiroketal structure with an inversion of stereochemistry. We can rationalize this epimerization process by looking at the orbital structure of the molecule and considering the anomeric effect. The anomeric effect is something which is frequently observed in cyclic acetals, especially in carbohydrates, which contain a similar acetal motif. Though it can happen with other electronegative atoms, it is most commonly seen in oxygen, such as in this case. It is the hyperconjugation between an oxygen lone pair of electrons and the carbon-oxygen sigma antibonding orbital of another oxygen group. This requires an antiperiplanar orientation between the lone pair and the carbon-oxygen antibonding orbital. While this is a stabilizing effect overall and strengthens one carbon-oxygen bond, it does weaken the other, making it more labile and more likely to epimerize. It is likely, therefore, that this epimerization process happened rapidly during the hydrogenation reaction by activation with the metal catalyst and formed a ratio of diastereomers 
proportional to the overall stability between the two epimers. The epimerization process could not be stopped. However, they could separate the desired isomer and the synthesis could proceed. The next step was an oxidation ketal formation sequence. The lactone was first hydrolyzed using lithium hydroxide in water to produce a carboxylic acid and primary alcohol. The alcohol was oxidized using desmartin periodinane, as we saw earlier, and this generated an aldehyde. Reaction in ethanol with PPTS, which is a weak acidic catalyst, generated the target ketal. We can look at this ketal formation in detail. The aldehyde is first protonated, making the carbon centre more electrophilic. Intramolecular addition of the carboxylic acid generates the hemiacetal, which is once again protonated and eliminated to form a carbonium electrophile. Ethanol, which was used as a solvent for the reaction, then adds to this electrophile and generates the target ketal. This was a stereoselective reaction with only one isomer formed. While you could draw the reaction with ethanol adding first and the acid adding second, intramolecular reactions are generally much faster than intermolecular reactions, which is why it is more likely that the acid has added at the first step of the reaction. We can rationalize stereoselectivity of the reaction by looking at the intermediate. The bulky polycyclic framework of the molecule provides steric hindrance to the bottom face of the electrophile, which means that ethanol is more likely to add from the top. The ketal formation is a reversible reaction. This means that it is quite easy to drive the reaction to favour the thermodynamic product, which in this case is the addition of ethanol to the side of the ring opposite to the cage framework. Moving forward, the TIPS group was now deprotected using tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. Once again, a desmartin or iodinane oxidation was employed to oxidize the alcohol to an aldehyde. A Grignard reaction was then performed to install the propyl group. The resulting alcohol was immediately oxidized, again using DMP, to form the ketone. This was done to prevent a possible transketalization. This will be similar to the epimerization reaction. However, the newly formed secondary alcohol would react in place of the lactone hydroxyl group. With the side chain installed, the final reaction was an alpha hydroxylation. The authors had to employ an unusual oxidation using molecular oxygen. While they did attempt more common methods, these did not produce the alcohol in the desired stereochemistry. To effect this transformation, an enolate was first formed with lithium HMDS. Molecular oxygen was then bubbled through this solution several times over a period of three hours at minus 78 degrees. The paramagnetic oxygen reacted with its enolate and, upon workup with triethylphosphite, the target leonucatal was formed in a 1 to 1 ratio with its enantiomer. In summary, the authors reported the first total synthesis of leonucatal in 23 steps from the geraniol starting material. Important reactions in the synthesis were the titanium promoted radical cyclization, the unusual Shapiro type fragmentation, and the novel gold promoted spirocyclization of the beta-ketoenolactone. The methodology developed for this synthesis could likely be employed to synthesize other labdane type terpenes and opens the door towards diversity oriented synthesis where the structure of the molecule could be modified and elaborated on and the impact on the biological activity explored. That's everything from this synthesis. Next week we'll be looking at the late stage and strain accelerated oxidation enabled synthesis of huawamine A by the Chen group. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below.